Oh, nothing like a good strong coffee to kick the day off. Now today I'm doing something that is very, very dear to my heart. I'm fishing for trout with mud eyes under a bubble float. This takes me back. It is absolute bread and butter fishing. And I've nearly completed the rig. The last thing I need to do is just tie my hook on. And it's simply a matter of putting the line through the end of the hook. Now this is a very, very small hook and very, very fine line. And the knot I tie is called a uni. So I go back around to the main line and I pinch the two and make a loop. And after I've made that loop, it is simply a matter of folding that line back through there five times. One, two, three, four, five times. Just a little bit of lube, pull that up, and that'll slide down just beautifully on that hook. Now the tag is this bit of line off hanging off the end. Just cut that nice and close and our hook there is ready to rock and roll. So the rig, very, very simple. We have a bubble float. That bubble float is attached to the line. The line runs right through the center of the float and that actually becomes our casting weight as well. That runs down to about a meter of line and then a very small split shot sinker. That gets our mud eye down. And then there's our hook on the end. And speaking of mud eyes, this guy here is about to crawl off the table. That is the bait we're using today. How cool is that thing? This is the larvae stage of a dragonfly. It's the dragonfly, lays his little legs. It turns into this guy here. He swims around the water, climbs up onto a tree when he's ready, and then he turns into a beautiful dragonfly and flies away. Trout love these things. They are like lollipops for trout. He swims around, jet propulsion. The trout sneaks out of the weed. Bang, the float goes down, and it's very exciting times. I'm gonna pack up and hit the road because I'm about to meet someone pretty cool who knows this place like the back of his hand. Well, we're finally out on Lake Tolondo. I'm with Trevor Holmes from Victorian Inland Charters. And what started as a morning session has turned into a late afternoon session, hasn't it, mate? Yeah, that's right, Paul. It was pretty nasty conditions here this morning, so we decided to come out this afternoon. And uh, we're giving it a good crack now with mud eyes out, and I think we'll do pretty well. Good work. Nasty. It was raining so hard. At one stage, I was doing the dishes in the sink. There was actually white caps rolling over the plates. Yeah, well, I saw one of the chooks back at the farmhouse lay the same egg three times, Paul. That's pretty windy. <laughs> <laughs> now look at that line coming off the reel like that. And he's already jumped there, he? Oh, so then it's time to wind. Oh, oh, oh look at that! <laughs> All right, the line was coming off, so obviously the fish has felt the hook. And he's jumping behind the boat. How cool is that? <laughs> Do you often see them jump before you get a hook in them, mate? Yeah, they quite often they're out of the water before you even know. There's the float. This fish is just... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's a big rainbow. And look at him go. Look at him head up the front there. That's a big fish. Oh. This is what I think, Trev, when I think of Lake Tolondo. I think mud eye under a bubble float, big fish, long rods in amongst the timber. This is what boyhood dreams are about. Now, I reckon this fish should be tiring. Um, said Paul. It's a little bit windy, isn't it, Trev? Very windy at the moment, Paul, but uh, we're battling the elements and we're doing quite well. We're doing okay. I don't mind battling elements for fish of this quality. What a great fish. I'll just slide him around you slowly. And you can hear that drag clicking off ever so slowly. There you go, mate. Whoops, he's not beat. Now he is. Now he's beat. <laughs> oh, oh. Well done. That is a glorious fish. I'll get you to grab that rod for me, mate. Certainly. And I'll grab this fish by the tail. It's a big hen. Oh, that is a great big fat Tolondo rainbow trout. And what, two minutes at this spot? Yeah, not even two minutes. And I can actually feel the snails in her guts, Trev. Can you really? Yeah, they've been feeding up pretty hard on the snails lately, Paul, but uh, obviously that one's decided it's like a mud eye. Just look at the eggs coming out the back of this trout. Look at this, I'm actually stripping this trout. That is caviar coming out, and that is just unbelievable. I actually saw recently on a fantastic TV show how they strip trout and salmon, and that's some of the caviar you eat. So, this fish was full of eggs. Oh, there she goes, she's dropping more. Well, magnificent rainbow trout, big rainbow flash down the side, green back, and spots on the tail. 
This is what Trout Fishing Victoria is all about. The technique that we're using here today is bait fishing, and with that, we've got a float that floats on top and a leader going down to a mud eye underneath. The line going out to it, we actually grease that before we come out with mousseline. That way, the line floats on top, it stays there, it doesn't get caught around weed, and we give a better bait presentation. Hey, oh, yeah. It's Trevor. But I have fished bait runners on Snapper in Port Phillip Bay for a long time, mate. And I've got to say, I love that noise of the bait runner losing line. It's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's sensational, Paul. Have you always used bait runners on the trout? Yeah, pretty much. Um, just because of the versatility of them, you can adapt them to any situation and they're yep. just a great reel. They are so good and quite cost effective now too, actually. Oh, he's a nice big fish too. Is he? Brown or bow? It's a brown, is it? He's staying down deep like a big brown. Yeah, I reckon, look, if I was a betting man, I'd say brown. It's, it's big and, I, oh, it's a big fish. It's a, it's a, <laughs> we've established one thing. It is definitely a trout. <laughs> He's a beautiful big golden brown. He's a beautiful brown, brown isn't he? He's not beat yet, is he? No. Definitely got good fighting qualities, these fellas, Paul. They have. Now, if you slowly lift him, I will come in like this and we'll just drag him towards the net. Don't put the net to the fish, put the fish to the net. It's not ready yet. And these waves are making it a little bit difficult. I've got to tell you, you can't see it here, but it is blowing 40 knots. And I did not think we were going to get out for a fish today. And I'm surprised, Trevor, these fish are still biting with these barometric pressures. Yeah, look, they're not as uh, active as they usually are, Paul, but they're certainly here and they're willing to have a feed. You put a mud eye in front of them, oh. they find it very hard to resist. I just touched him up for you, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? He's still got more power and he wants to go. Yeah, you'd never give up on these things. You think you've got them tired out, get them at the net. They'll roll over on their side when they're ready to come to the net. I think this has been a five minute fight so far. Just slide it over, surely she is done. Beautiful, well done Paul. Just for a second there Trev, I thought I might have to buy a bigger net. <laughs> Mate, grab your fish out of there, I'll hold your rod for you. Watch your back there Rick. Rick, my camera's doing very well in tough conditions. You can hear that wind, and we're hiding behind a hill, 4,000 trees. It's just amazing, but the fish are still biting. I've got one serious question for you, Trev. Have you been holding trout long? No, not very <laughs> long, Paul. This fella just doesn't want to cooperate. That is a solid brown trout. Mate, is that average for Tolondo, over average? What is it? Yeah, he's probably your average fish in here. There is much bigger fish. Uh, I think we've got a great future to look forward to here, Paul. I tell you what, in the next 12 months you want to get to Tolondo because these fish are going to be just monstrous. Whoops! And they're slippery. And hard to hang and on. And they're it. slippery little suckers. The amazing thing about trout, they don't actually have scales for the first month of their life. And they are so clever, a trout can swim up to its partner, have a look, and look at distinctive features like the, the shape of its eye, the pectoral fin, the body, and it will know if that fish is somehow a relative. And because of that, trout don't interbreed. Isn't that incredible? That's, yeah, that's, they're an incredible species, Paul, that's for sure. They're not a native fish. They're a feral fish in theory. But you know what? I love ferals. That's why I'm fishing with Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Today's fishing and boating tip is brought to you by boatsales.com.au. One thing that anglers often don't think about is how full their reel is with line. This reel I spooled right to the top just in case I hooked a big fish. It's an IX 2000R by Shimano, little kids tackle rack combo, and I'm fighting a southern bluefin tuna. Whether you catch a mullet, snapper or big marlin, make sure you always have the correct amount of line on your reel. Too much line, it'll fly off the spinning reel too easy, get some big knots. On an overhead, you wind in the middle, it gets a lump, it snags on that and you lose the fish. A lot of reels actually have a red line around them to let you know just how far to fill them, but make sure you always fill your reel to the exact correct amount, whether it be overhead or spin, because when you hook a big fish, you sure will be thankful that you had every single yard on there you physically could get on, and an arm's length too. This fishing boat is brought to you by boatsales.com.au. I think I'm gonna be here for a while. Just losing a bit of line here. Just lost a bit of line, so we're going to feed it some line. I better get back down there, isn't it? Let's see if he takes it up. We've just recovered from catching that last fish. There's stuff everywhere on the boat. There he goes. He's picking up a bit of slack, I think. 
There he goes. What do I do, Trev? Do I wait? No, I'd probably have a crack at him now, have I think, Paul. Yeah. Oh! That's what? a big fish in the weed, wait. I think. Oh, oh, he's up oh on yeah. Top. Look at the size of this thing. I can't believe this. I've been trying to re rig my other rod, Trev, for about <laughs> 10 minutes. It's laying in the corner there. Please don't step on it. And every time we try, it's there's another hectic. fish. It is absolutely hectic. Now, I'm going to stand up here, Trev, only because there's not enough room for all of us in this boat. <laughs> um, and this fish, look at that. Straight away, he's coming to the boat, head down. Oh, he's going to tangle those lines, is he? Oh, big brownie it is. It's a big brownie. I've got to get him around this way. And the beauty of the long rod, see that? I can get him right away from that outboard. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah, good son. Who said brown trout don't jump? <laughs> Not me. Now, if today was a day off, seriously, Trev, you wouldn't go fishing, would you? No, nah, that's right, Paul. It's not ideal conditions, so imagine what it's going to be like here when it is. When it's good conditions, I couldn't imagine just how good it must be. But it's all oh, nearly beat, nearly beat. Because seriously, the camera won't show how bad it is, but it is bad. And it's rough. And that's all part of the deal. Yes. Well, we're in Australia. Fun. We're in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Can you watch your We're camera in Australia. Man, Paul? Can I get a cameraman who knows how to stand up? Just <laughs> email info at ifish.com.au if you're a good cameraman and you've been walking for longer than 12 months. Sorry, Rich. <laughs> 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 it's all happening, Richie! It's all happening! Now back to the trout! Oh look, he's just pinned, he's just pinned. Look at that. Look at the colours of that. And look at that little tiny hook, just pin him in the jaw. And isn't it incredible to think that these fish can come along and actually find a mud eye in these conditions, such a small fish. Now, I'll just bring him around for you. And Trev, if you want to grab, whoops, there's not even the pliers, I can get that hook out. Because this fish isn't gut hooked, he's hooked in the lip, he's going back. All the fish with gut hooked today, they're going the Bradley Smoker. But this fish, hooked in the lip, gonna have a fantastic survival rate. He's going back, so next time you come to Lake Tolondo, you can catch this magnificent brown trout all by yourself. You've got to tell me, and you've got to share with the viewers, what was your dad's favourite mud eye joke? Oh, his mud eye joke was, uh, did you hear about the two mud eyes sitting in a dam one day? They're sitting there nice and quiet, and a uh, dragonfly flew over the top. One turned to the other one, he said, you'll never get me up in one of those. <laughs> because dragonflies come from mud eyes. There you go, very funny. And your dear old dad's left you? Yeah, yeah, he left us in 2009, and uh, this place has got a lot of sentimental value for me because he's raced horses in here, he played footy in here. And he was a local here, so. And most importantly, he took you fishing in here? Exactly. That's a wonderful story, mate. I can't wait to bring my boy here. Yep, fish! Oh, oh! See that jump? Oh, look at him go! <laughs> now, we just made the big call. Look at him go! That's a big fish. Now, as a fisherman, you just never know when to make that next move, do you, Trev? No, exactly right. We were just talking about it. It's about time we did move. <laughs> about time we moved. I can hardly stand up with excitement. And we literally <laughs> went to grab the rods. And as I picked this thing up, it just screamed off. He's going straight to the front of the boat. Here he goes. I turned him, pulled his head back this way. Yeah, it's a rainbow. Spots on the tail. I just saw his tail come up. And he's got those spots. What he's a, a big solid fish He's a too. solid fish, mate. He's a big solid fish and I'm hoping... Oh, it's not wanting to come to you yet. He doesn't want to come. I'm <laughs> hoping he's used a lot of energy at those big jumps early. Didn't he do some good jumps? Yeah, sensational. Now, the camera's going to make it look like absolute 100% daylight, but it's 8 o'clock at night. We haven't been fishing for long and we are losing a bit of light, so... This fish has come just at the right time. Come around here, mate. What a cracking fish. Now, I'll just see if we get a chance here, mate. Slide him up. Oh, that is a massive rainbow trout. Loving your work, uh, man. Look at that. 
Make sure these three words are embedded in your mind forever. Victorian Inland Charters, Trevor Holmes. Because when you come fishing with this man, you end up with smiles like these. <laughs>